So Tentu, where do we go then as Canadian artists, creators, actors, storytellers? How do we create, you know, from now on, create, creating a culture that actually respects the voices, respects the stories, but doesn't just do them in small theater spaces in the, in the attic of some old house in Saskatoon in Toronto, but actually puts them on the major networks? How do we do that? It's, money has to understand what it is. Money has to become uh, a part of a healing force. It, it, you know, the, the people of greed are, you know, they're, they're, mm, 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 they're making holes in the boat, man. They're... <laughs> They're, they're just so hungry. And, you know, maybe we're getting to a time in our evolvement where we'll be able to do that more. But in, in, in our journey as Indigenous filmmakers, they don't, they don't trust us with the money. You know, like, uh, you know, one of our... our our filmmakers, our directors, they wanted, they wanted that director to have a white director alongside of them before they could get that money. You know, that's, that's what I'm talking about. It's deep, you know. Racism is very, very deep. And uh, it's, it's not easy, but it, it will be done. It will be done because it's, it's a part of a natural force. And, uh, and that's how uh, a civilization can be healthy, is bringing those stories to the truth of what they are. See, this story, these things that we shared in the last five minutes, those are the things that were attacked. Those were the things that were, that were, that, that they're, they're just desperate to get rid of. That's why potlatches were outlawed. Yeah. That's why our ceremonies are outlawed. Our language is outlawed. Yeah. Everything that we had as human beings was outlawed. Well, the English said to the Irish, uh, no music. The English said to the Scotch, no bagpipes, no music. And so there was a whole language of singing that the Scots came up with called Pibirocht which was what kept the traditions of their music alive without the instruments. So it's, uh, there's one other sort of future story. This is my optimistic side happening. I just want to share for a second. I was asked to uh, present a young dance festival here down at Harborfront. And it was uh, dance forms from, you know, the Chinese Canadian kids in Richmond Hill, the Taiwanese Canadian kids from Brampton, the East Asian kids. You know, they're all teenagers and they'd all come down for this kind of dance festival. There was a First Nations group. There was uh, Chinese, Taiwanese, uh, I don't think it was Japanese, South Korean. And, you know, I did my little thing in the microphone, but I was backstage while each of the group of teenagers was doing their dance. And the interaction backstage was a snapshot of the Canada that I hope is going to be, in that each group, you know, the, the Chinese the Canadian group from Richmond Hill would come up and they would do their dance, and they were 12 and 14, and they're sort of split between, they've been taught the traditional chant, uh, dances of their Chinese parents, who just come from Hong Kong, but you could see the Canadianness inside them wondering about that. Meanwhile, in the, off, in the si stage around, in the, in the wings, no one was really watching. The Taiwanese kids weren't really watching, and the, uh, the South Korean kids weren't watching the Chinese kids. Except when the First Nations kids danced. Two First Nations kids went out and did this dance. And first, the dance was a mix between traditional dance and modern dance. And second, the way they cost themselves was a mixture between the two. The wings were totally changed. All the South Korean kids, all the Chinese kids, all the Japanese kids, all the were all watching. They couldn't take their eyes off the two First Nations kids doing this dance in the middle of the theater. And I thought, 
okay. There is something about an indigenous part of our culture expressed half traditionally and half modern-wise by these two kids. And the newcomers, the new newcomers, were riveted by it. Yeah, well, there's really something there. And there's many, 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 many stories that haven't been told about our relationship with the Chinese when they were brought over here to build the railroads and their whole process, and our relationship with the black slaves and the freedom train. Um, you know, we have a whole underground of, of uh, history with, uh, with the people who came here. And it's, it's so rich. I mean, the possibilities, the, the, the whole business of being so, so greedy with that, that world of, of money and, and exposition is, is really, uh, it's kind of cheating a lot, a lot of people, you know, a lot of uh, richness. Uh -huh. that, uh, it's a part of all who we are. I, you know, I maintain that uh, no matter your culture, we have the same, uh, we have the same blueprint. And, you know, there might be, the, you know, variances and all of that. Right. But the essential structure is the same. You know, there's so many things that, um, that like, uh, through certain trying times, I did a lot of I Ching. And uh, because it talked in terms of, you know, the forces and, Mm -hmm. All of that, it was too, um, you know, paternalistic in, in a lot of its interpretation. So I would have to reinterpret all of that kind of stuff. But uh, yes, I say coming from a patriarch culture to a yeah. matriarch culture. Yeah, but it was also a part of my discoveries too. You know, it would talk about in terms of uh, a patriarch or patriarchal um, illustration and then think in terms of what would that be you know and then next thing you know you'd run into somebody or I, I mean that's the magic of life in a sense when and when it's all untethered is that uh, being raised in a in a situation where nobody would answer any of my questions nobody would you mean in high school? When I was in a kid. Acting or in, when in the I was kitchen. a kid, anywhere, anywhere, all through my, my, my growing up. What sort of questions weren't answered? Anything, any kind of question. I just like where are my socks or who well, are my sure. Métis grandfathers? Yeah, where are my socks? Well, <laughs> go find them. You know, it's that kind of thing. There was no hovering, <laughs> no hovering around me. That's for sure. And, and so the, what the beauty of that is, is that you, you learn to use your sensory systems uh, as well as, you know, everything that you have to watch for the answers because they'll come. But they just, they aren't coming from these people that you have asked right. for the answers, but they will come. Right. Thanks, Tim, too. All right. It's great.